But in addition to that, you have this spent fuel, which is all the reactor fuel that came out of the reactors that used to power it over the 40, 50, 60 year lifetime of that reactor. And that spent fuel is now hazardous on a very, very different time scale than the spent or than the reactor itself now, of course, which is in decommissioning at most in 60 years. So you're taking this site and what you're doing is you potentially can clean it up in a few decades, but now you've got this issue of what to do with this spent nuclear fuel. Um, the U.S. has failed uh, for a variety of reasons to develop a national essentially repository to store all that fuel. So really we're left with some type of management. And there's basically two approaches to managing that fuel. One is at the reactor sites themselves um, or at some consolidation uh, of sites uh, that, so if a utility owns multiple reactor sites, there are utilities that do move fuel to one of those plant sites that they own. But primarily there's the approach of leaving it at existing reactor sites or absent some type of permanent repository, doing a, what's called a consolidated interim storage facility, which means we take waste from a number of different places, find a place to put it, and, um, and leave it there. And so I just want to touch on those issues a little bit. The basically de facto solution for all the sites right now is to keep it where it is. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, that is not the worst scenario in many, reason, in, in many respects. Uh, the fuel, as long as it's maintained, is generally in a relatively safe configuration. Um, and there are a number of sites in the country that are already doing this, so we have experience with this process. So certainly in a short period of time, this appears to be a viable, um, a viable approach. But one of the issues that we have to look at going forward is, is if we have these new entrants coming in who don't have a lot of experience operating nuclear reactor sites, and they're there largely to do decommissioning, but now they actually have the responsibility for the fuel as well. That's a very different question then about these companies being able to maintain and monitor that fuel for the potentially centuries that, that it could be, it could be uh, monitored and needed to be dealt with. So the other approach, which is a very attractive approach, in particular from the industry perspective, is what's called the consolidated interim storage site. And that basically means finding some location somewhere where you can take all this fuel that maybe is in your, your, your member's district, moving that somewhere um, that's in somebody else's district, um, and that can always be an attractive proposition for the first group. Um, and so the industry likes to talk about this as a very viable approach. We want to do consolidated interim storage. And largely the idea is you can then fully decommission a site and move, and move forward. Um, but if you think about this, uh, there's a lot of challenges behind this idea of consolidated interim storage. So the first one is that essentially this is permanent storage. Um, as much as you may hear from people about consolidated interim storage, it is de facto permanent storage. Because once you move the fuel somewhere, it's going to be very hard to move it somewhere else. Really the only place in principle you could move it to would be a permanent repository. Um, but right now, there's really no prospects, certainly in the next several decades, for any type of permanent repository for, for spent fuel. So you get into questions about who would own that fuel. If you move it to a consolidated storage site, does it still belong to the original producers or the original owners of the site? Well, if you do, then what happens to that fuel when the consolidated interim storage facility closes? Because right now, these facilities can only be licensed for 40 years. They're allowed to get license extensions, but at a certain point, that license period would end. And then that facility can no longer maintain that fuel. So one of the challenges going forward is what do you do with that period or that assumption that you don't have a repository? Do you require the owners of the fuel today to reserve an area of land where they can take back that fuel in the, in the future? Uh, those are the kinds of policy issues that people need to begin to ask. Because otherwise, you're going to wind up potentially moving fuel to a consolidated interim storage site. And then in 60, 70 years, when that site is closing, you have nowhere to put that fuel. And we're right back into a situation in which we have fuel that has no home and no viable location. Um, so it's a very, very important question uh, about what you do in the long term. So typically when you talk about interim storage, when you hear about interim storage, in my mind what you always come back to is the issue of permanent storage. Can you find a permanent storage location? And if we could find a permanent lo storage location, we would use it. So again, I think you get back to a logical loop where the idea of an interim storage site sounds very attractive on the part of the industry, but from a practical standpoint, 
it's really not that good of a solution. Um, the other piece to consider is that whenever you're dealing with nuclear fuel you're, and moving it to a new location, you do inherit some risks with the transportation of the fuel. And when you have an interim storage site, you're t basically increasing the amount of transportation hazard and risk that you have to do. Because you'd have to move that site or that fuel to an interim site and then from that interim site either back to the original site or to a permanent repository. And so when you start to talk about those kinds of issues, then people begin to realize that interim is maybe not necessarily a good approach because either it's going to have to leave that site in which you have new transportation risks, you have the issue of where does it go back to, or it's de facto a permanent storage site. And so the community that may think it's a great idea to have an interim site all of a sudden realizes that in, pri in principle what they're really getting is a permanent storage facility. So I think it's very, very challenging ultimately to identify and ultimately develop an interim storage facility. So um, that is um, the end of my presentation and hopefully it kicked off some good ideas that we'll have a discussion about. Thank you.